Boom! We're back here at Mind Pump, the best fitness podcast in the world here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Here's the giveaway for today's episode. Maps Anywhere. One of you lucky viewers will get free access to Maps Anywhere. This is a great workout program that requires no gym equipment, okay? All you need are your body and resistance bands. And we designed Maps Anywhere for somebody that really wants to get, get a good workout. And I mean a workout that will build muscle strength, boost the metabolism, burn body fat. So we program this uh, very, very incredibly. It's a very effective program. You get it for free, but you got to do the following. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode to help us with the YouTube algorithm. Make it a good comment and subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you get free access to Maps Anywhere. Also, all month long, Maps Anywhere is actually 50% off. Also, the Fit Mom Bundle, which includes Maps Anywhere, Maps Hit, uh, Maps Anabolic, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide. So all those things is in the Fit Mom Bundle. That's also 50% off, all right? So if you want to sign up for those or just learn more, head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code NOVEMBER50 for that discount. All right, here comes the show. So I started my uh, my annual uh, ketogenic diet. Oh, well, okay, what prompted that? <laughs> you know, my you tummy. Gut, yeah, every time. <laughs> you tell me. That's why it's the annual one. Tell me but time. Well, you, you know what been, though? It's you've good. been pushing the bulk for a hot minute there, yeah. Dude, trying, but I can't. I can't push too hard because then my digestion tends to get thrown off. Although the uh, digestive enzymes uh, from uh, the, one of our partners, uh, who is uh, Mass Enzymes, helps a little bit. But anyway, nonetheless, I went uh, keto because that usually helps, and I do this like once or twice a year. This is why I think, and we've talked about this on the show. It's a good idea for people to, once you're good and you've got kind of a handle on your nutrition somewhat, it's probably a good idea to go through these different kinds of uh, diets, not the crazy ones, but the ones that actually have maybe some application, just to see how your body feels and reacts and That's how, you how your palate clients. changes, you know? That's how I used to coach clients. Hmm. I used to love to encourage them into just trying out different diets and just get them like comfortable with running through a diet and then not becoming attached or married to the diet itself, but then starting to unpack the things in the diet that made you feel good. Yes. In other words, so you run mm. keto and you go cut out most of your carbohydrates. And then instead of being like, oh my God, keto lost me 15 pounds. It's an amazing diet going like, okay, what are some of the things we noticed when we cut carbohydrates mm -hmm. out? What were your energies like? What was your workouts like? What, yeah, did, did you it notice help with appetite? Did you notice inflammation? Did yeah. you notice cravings? Did you notice sleep? Like and it was starting to help them attach the, the, the elimination of carbohydrates or specific carbohydrates in this case uh, and how your body felt. And then, okay, now let's, let's go to a vegan diet for a while. Oh, let's go. And then slowly move them through these different diets while also trying to coach them on the things that are making them feel. Yeah, so what does that look like though? Like, so is it all sardines and butter? Yeah. Like, what is this? Diet I guess why I didn't. Like it. it. Dude, it's so hard to structure that specific diet. It's a lot of it's macadamia a lot of, nuts, avocado. And it's a lot of fatty meat, <laughs> a lot of uh, yeah, avocado, avocado, olives. That's all. I'll eat some. I eat a lot of very well cooked vegetables for to help with digestion and the fiber, um, butter, you know, bacon, that kind of stuff. But you know, it's funny for me. What I here's the pluses, right? I do notice a little less inflammation. And I also notice I don't get a sore from my workouts, which is kind of strange. And I always notice this every time. I'll work out hard and not get a sore. I do feel mentally sharper when I do it every single time. Here's the drawbacks, right? Uh, muscle's not as full, so I don't get the pump or feel as full. And I lose a little bit of strength. I can tell when I work out, I lose some strength. It's very noticeable. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Justin Cammy's like, you're weak. I did a you're video to he, He's always good at dishing compliments. I got to like offset it, you know, a little bit. He compliments and yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Shut your mouth. He was, I did a video or I was doing something. I was actually thanking uh, Brooke. She sent us over a nice book and some spices on my story and, and plugging her. And I wasn't paying attention, but it was during Sal working out. And so you, when I go back and hear the, I got a bunch of DMs. I didn't even tell you this, but it was, is that Sal in the background? And I'm like, what? And I will go back and listen to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you hear that in the background? Yeah. Right, so the, I'm over. Thanks, Brooke. Uh, shout out. This is awesome. Realtor. Blah blah. And I'm doing that. And he was like, someone's taking a shit in the background. Sal, Sal's so happy, but he's in the back. <laughs> oh you, yeah. You know what it is? It's because I put my headphones on. 
and so I hear nothing else. But you guys have no music out here, so it's yeah. like quiet. So yeah. it must sound did so you, annoying. Uh, did you guys see that uh, video I posted with the guy in the gym making oh, moaning the, noises? The, the Holy Spirit guy or no, like no, that? No, no, the one before that. Oh, oh no. Yeah, was... so this guy, and I'll, we'll have to throw it up. But, uh, I, dude, I was seriously dying for a couple days. Like, I couldn't help it. What was it? it? it so this guy was spotting him doing a bench press, and he started moaning like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Wait, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, that was like the ultimate troll genius move. Well, I've seen the opposite. I, there's a video that went viral of a, a like this really petite girl. She's probably, I don't know, 115 pounds tops. And she's squatting like, you know, uh, like 35s on each side. And every rep, yeah. she does that. Like the whole gym shows all the guys uh, turning yeah. around Dude, so and have watch you guys, her. Have you guys ever had a client that moaned? Yes. What? Me too. We yeah. talked about this story, didn't we? Yeah, I told yeah. you a long time ago. I had a, yes, a Tina Turner client. She oh, looked right. spot on to Tina Turner. She came in, the makeup, the heels, the purple outfit, the hair, and I trained <laughs> this lady. And What's love got to do with it? And anyway. she oh, come out nice, in like dude. the 80s, you know, spandex pants yeah. and the, 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 what are those, the leg, the leg the warmers. Yeah. Oh, everything. I mean, pure, like straight out of the 80s. And she would come in and I'd train her and we would do the hack squat and she would do the most sexual moans <laughs> every rep. Uh, every rep. No matter how much weight on it. for everybody. So we, oh, yeah. dude. All the guys stop, put their weights down. They would just watch us work dude, out. They I thought like a round fun. of applause yes. and she's done like yes. every set. Yeah. I had one of my first clients. This, I was 18 years old. Yeah, this is an early one for me too yeah so i'm already like first yeah. of all i'm 18 so yeah. i'm a kid i'm also new and i'm trying to do a good job and i'm really taking this job seriously and this woman with probably the biggest boobs i've ever seen in my life hires me now she turned out to be an ex porn star this is a true story mm -hmm. so she but she was older by this point so wow. she was a porn star from the she 80s. had an ex porn star moaning like this i swear to god wow. i swear on everything this is true 100 percent uh, what was her name? Ashley Winters. Was her that was her porn name? You remember her porn name? Of course I remember. Wow. Doug? Of course I remember. <laughs> he doesn't want to pull it up. Come I on, know. Doug. Shut up, Adam. It, I mean, this is like, this Do is that on your own time. This is the best thing you could ever Google. This, of all the Googles I asked, this is the best one. Yeah, hey, you know, it's she's hard to find, but because she did it. I don't I know think, the titles of her, her movies. I know, but I can't say it on the show. That's okay. how bad okay. they were. But, this, remember, she was from oh, the late, she did she did these movies in the late 80s. So when I, when she well, hired me. educate us on the difference. What's the difference between late 80s porn to now? What's the well, uh, shaved remember, and unshaved. I don't, apparently in that, yeah, I don't know. In that area, it was really, in that era, I guess it was a big deal to have like ridiculously large. Anyway, so she hires me and while we're doing exercises, that's exactly what she'd do. She'd go, oh, <laughs> oh, and then she'd say my name. Oh, Sal. While she's no, doing she it. Knows. I swear to God. At dude. what point, okay, at what point. I didn't know you just do. looking around. No, 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 like, but yeah. at what point training her did you find this out? Like, how long did you train her before you found out she was a porn star? Or did that come out early? That came out relatively early. Oh, because, so yeah, you knew. she was not. No, so, so she's playing into it. Well, so here's what it was. So she hires me. She's making these noises. I'm intimidated. I'm 18 year old kid. Like I'm like not, I'm like intimidated by it and I'm trying to do a good job and other people are looking at me. So I'm literally pretending like it's not happening. Yeah. And I'm literally just like, kind of have to. Yeah. I'm like four more reps, you know, make sure your knees are straight or, you know, fix your back or whatever. While she's like, ah, uh, you know, doing this thing. Right. Yeah. So as, as I'm training her and just, I only trained her for like a couple months and then she disappeared. I, she, I, you know, we, you talk to your clients. So what do you do? She's like, oh, I own uh, a entertainment agency. I'm like, entertainment agency? Like, what's that? She owned a company with strippers. That's what I'm going to say about us yeah. for now on people ask us. I know. We, I own an entertainment <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot easier to describe than what people. we actually. Do. I don't know what to say, anyways. People, do you guys have this problem? Not to cut your story what off. What we but do? Oh, yeah. yeah, all but the time. I, I like every time I meet somebody new, I think I say something different every time. Yeah, I don't think I've been consistent. I'm fitness for, entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> no. I like this better. What did you say? What did you Entertainment company. Yeah, we I have, said, a, I, we I have said, an entertainment company. Yeah, that's still silly. Yeah. <laughs> I say fitness media. That's what I say. It's very vague. But my, you know, my kid. So my, my, you know, my kids will say influencer. I'm like, you say that Dude, again. You're grounded. Dirty. Forever. <laughs> dirty. Do they really call dirty you that? Mouth. They just don't. They don't really understand. I mean, for them, it's that's what I mean. You're on YouTube, you know. So you're, you're an, an influencer. influencer. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you're all no. that. You know. And they don't. No. Understand. Yeah. They don't get the whole. I'm like, no. It's fitness yeah. media. <laughs> What's yeah. the difference? No, Dad? I told you guys. I had a client that um, her. It was. It was like Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde. Like she 
was a massage therapist, was the most chill, like mild person you've ever met. And like when she got into the weight room, like, and she wanted to go in where all the, the guys were like, you know, slamming weights and being mm-hmm. aggressive. And she would just throw it right back at him. Just, ah! Really? Ah! Yeah. Ah! <laughs> and, and I, <laughs> I didn't know what to do because I, I knew she's put on a show. And, uh, and and all the guys in there were just like, oh, is, is she punking me? You know, and she'd be like looking right at him and everything. Yeah, I, I know. Awkward. I, I know. I, I think I told you guys about that. I had an older client that I trained that just she just she farted. Oh yeah, no, yeah, like no, almost every rep. About these. Yeah, she yeah, would yeah, fart, yeah, and she'd yeah. laugh about it and stuff. I'm like, all right, keep going. We're working out. You know, yeah. I wish Stay you know it, for anybody. Who, I know we have a lot of uh, listeners that are either new trainers or just like thinking about getting started. If I could go back and do something over again that I wish I would have done, I wish I would have journaled. So if you're listening oh, right know, now right? and you're Some relatively new trainer lost. and true. you journal, like there's just, you meet, and for lots of reasons, right? Like I, there's, I mean, I got tons of wisdom passed down to me through brilliant yeah. client yeah. clients, you know, yep. funny stories like you're talking about right now. Like, I just think that it, you, you meet so many people in this profession that I wish I could go back and like mm-hmm. read all of these stories. I've forgotten more than I can remember yeah. now. And Do you have client, like early clients that you maybe only train? Cause I mean, I, Early days as a trainer, I, clients would stay with me for six months, eight months, maybe a year, which is a, still considered a long time in big yeah. box gyms. It was later on when I got good enough to where clients would stay with me for seven, eight, nine, ten years, right? But in the early days, it was much shorter. But are there any clients that you remember early on that you still remember them and you'd love to like run into them again? I have a couple oh, that yeah, I just- I have Yeah, quite Tom. A, yeah, yeah, he was one of, a big really? one for me. Yeah, he was one of the main clients that really helped me kind of transition from 24-hour fitness to on my own and, and getting started in that whole Do you still in contact with him? I haven't talked to him in a long time. I, yeah. I need to actually reach out. I had I a client, that, Wendy. I'm not going to say her last name just in case, but I trained her early on. Great client. She was training to get for her wedding and then trained a little bit afterwards and I lost contact with her. Yeah. And I've so, actually remained in contact with, with quite a few. Even to you didn't today. You have many clients as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally what I is. actually had probably the least amount of clients out of the three of us. When you, you mean think total? Of, yeah, total number. Because you got to remember, I was- well, you was, talked to like all of our clients. Well, yeah. So I mean, if you count that part. by proxy, right? Yeah. I, I, I trained tons of people. If you go, if you count all the trainers who worked underneath me- Oh, and because people. when you're in management, you're not- Yeah, I, was, I remember I was only two years as a trainer before I moved into management. Well, I was- a- And then as a manager, you only manage- or you only train so you only many like cl- two clients or so, right? Yeah, I mean, it depends on what point in my career where I train, but never more than 10, you know, two to 10, two to 10. Mm-hmm. So for- Maybe, it'd be pretty close because I was only a trainer for four months. Then I was a fitness manager for, I don't know, eight months, and then I became a general manager. And so I didn't train anybody until I opened my studio and then I trained clients. So yeah. it'd be yeah, pretty I had close. so many clients, it was ridiculous. Yeah, you oh, really? probably, yeah. actually, you probably trained the most. I probably, yeah. Because you were the you were a trainer, just a trainer, just longer, a trainer yeah. longer than the two of us, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and my whole livelihood was like how many I could get or like keep servicing. And obviously, you know, I had a few, I probably had like, I want to say eight like lifers that have been with me since the very beginning, never left. And then it was, that was a hard kind of, mm. you know, conversation once we started doing this, but yeah, I was always this like constant, like, how do I market myself? Like, how do I get in front of people? Yeah. And I got technically you're probably the better trainer of the three of us. Yeah. I mean, I probably that. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's what his best. wife tells him. At least. You know what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. honey, you're the best honey. Come on. No matter yeah. what those two assholes Some, say. You know what? I have a I two, need positive reinforcement. <laughs> two of my most, uh, I guess, uh, impactful success stories were two people who became trainers themselves full time. So that, they hired yeah, that's me awesome. and they had no interest in, they were not fitness fanatics. They just wanted to work out like everybody else. And then they ended up becoming, one was a kid. One was a kid that actually started working with me because he was insecure in school and his parents hired him, hired me to train him. Yeah. And he built so much confidence. He became a trainer, later on became a manager, did his own thing. And then another one was when I opened my studio, uh, her name is Nicole. She was the first client that hired me and then later on became a trainer in my facility and then, you know, doing it on her own now yeah. those those two always stand out because yeah, those are cool came. stories yeah. i had a client that was actually i got her in the best shape of her life she was uh, post breast cancer got her in the best shape of her life at 50 convinced her to do a bikini show totally something she never would have done did the bikini show after that told her that she has what it takes to be a trainer got her to get certified she got certified later on her and i went into business together 
Oh, so wow. the boot camp business that I've talked about on the show before, we actually were partners in that in that the original business that I started. I uh, did that for a couple of years with her. That's great. Mm -hmm. Speaking of partnerships, uh, and you know, people ask sometimes ask business questions and say, you know, how do you find the right partner in mm -hmm. business? It's I think you should pick your partner like you'd pick your spouse. That's literally like how important it is that you pick the right. Partner, it is a relationship at the end of the day because you can be friends. I don't know if it did it work out. Obviously, you're not working with her anymore, but you know, I know I, for me, I've had partners before, and it's I've it's had a lot of I've had a, quite a few partners actually. I've had quite a few partners, um, and I'd say 50 50 on um, having a relationship still with them after it ended. Mm -hmm. So, out of half of them, bad, That's true, yeah. yeah, half of them, bad, some bad ones. the other half just didn't wasn't the right time. Like, for example, I was in business with a trainer that Justin knows, uh, we worked with Ronnie. Um, he we were at a place where he wanted to go in the direction of franchising, and I did not want to do a franchise, so I'd rather build it myself. And uh, we agreed to basically disagree on that and say, okay, well, you go off and go do your franchise thing, I'll continue mm -hmm. doing building what I want to build. and no hard feelings. It was just, we, we split and went different ways. So we've mm -hmm. been still friends. I would consider us, but then I've had other ones where, yeah. you know, there's a sour taste in my mouth about yeah. how it ended and stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> it's, I think, God, you can almost make the case that it's harder than marriage. <laughs> it's, just, it's just because there's money involved mm -hmm. and the, the failure, like it's our, it's okay. Businesses fail more than marriages do. That's true. Okay. So business, so you're getting into a relationship that has a much higher chance of failure in the first place. Right. And then I think it carries all the same important things, qualities, as far as having to be able to the synergy, right? So if you, you have to have that type of synergy, you have to want to make it work too. When you don't like that yeah. person and you're like, you know, it's like, I'm not married to you. So I can always bounce. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I, I would make the case that it's, we don't have sex. It's, I mean, yeah. <laughs> this, what kind of, and that's like, you know, know? makeup sex saves lots of marriages. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so we can't, you we can't do that. that. <laughs> How do we replicate it's, if that? If it's bad, it's bad for a while for us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. Adam calls a meeting. Hey guys, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's been a rough week. I know it's yeah. been a lot of yelling. These are things to close off. Yeah. Yeah. This has worked in my, no. in my relationship, so I just yeah. have a proposition for We're you. We're not guys. doing that here. <laughs> let's let's uh, let's end up seeing what happens, dude. Have you guys uh, acquired this new superpower of when you get old? What is uh, it? Like, so my joints can predict the weather. <laughs> oh, you got one of those now? <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. My ankle has just been talking to me uh, as of late, and every time it talks to me. Ooh, hey, we got rain. The rain's coming. Yeah, is that why I saw you walking funny? Yeah, you were doing I was, this yeah. weird marching. I know. I was. I was trying to get like some response from my ankle, and like so, I'll just start like stomping my foot, you know, and trying to get things like to to grab on again and and get you some think connection. You are an, old, an old washing machine. Oh, just, <laughs> just if you hit kick it, it, it'll start working again. It's gonna kickstart it now. <laughs> like, you know I, do I have to wear new shoes? Like, uh, you know, I'm I'm trying to figure this out because I do mobility. I do all the things. Besides all that, um, put the juve light on it. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, great idea. I always like, again, this is another one of those things where uh, it's there and I got to figure out a way to like consistently put it in front for of the, me. For the joint pain? Yeah, dude. What's uh, the, the theory on that? Uh, why, oh, it reduces it? inflammation. And it, so because it, okay, so the, the, the way that some of the red light uh, rays work, they actually penetrate pretty deep. So if it's a joint that's like the ankle, right? There's thin skin. There's not a lot of fat. I know he's got cankles, but they're pretty lean. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was waiting to find the jab. Oh, there it is. There there it is. I was waiting. Yes. I was waiting. <laughs> yes. No, but the red light will go far enough to get the mitochondria to produce more ATP and to reduce inflammation. So I did it on my, uh, I don't. I think this one's called golfer's elbow when it's on the inside. Mm -hmm. It actually helped. Now I combined it with stretching and everything else, yeah. but it sped up the process. And I would just put the light on it every single day Oh, and interesting. I haven't, well, I haven't thought to that. use it like that. Well, that's yeah. why, that's how the guy, the, isn't the NFL using them that way for recovery? They're yeah, mainly for Yeah, recovery. but I'm thinking more like ligament though, like a torn ligament and the recovery of that because it speeds up the, the regeneration the of the mitochondria, process. right? Yep. Yeah. So that's, that makes sense to me, but I was, yep. when you refer to it for with like a joint issue, that's where I was kind of lost on yeah, the yeah, angle yeah. you're going, but I, I get it for the inflammatory. Yeah. So I, I've down. gotten um, DMs from people who use it for neck pain in particular. So they'll put it on their neck. Oh, interesting. Uh huh. And they'll notice that it, it you know, it helps. The biggest, pro most profound change. It's magical, dude. I don't, I don't even know how you can explain the science of it. It's weird. The yeah. skin part is pretty remarkable. When Jessica uses it regularly, it's actually profound. Like within a couple weeks, it looks very different. You just have to use it regularly. That's the only thing. You can't do it like once. 
Yeah. And then you know, speaking like of DMs, I have a DM that I'd like to read to you both right uh, now. Why are you making a face? It's actually just, I just, I just, I just, you know, hold on, let me guess. Phallus. You just brought me to go. Hey, oh, let me guess. Right. Uh, Adam, you're the best host. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't <laughs> share you those. With, there's too many of those for me to share on the podcast. Come on. <laughs> okay. No, that, the sure. reason why I'm going to share this one, because this is the second uh, AI uh, uh, pro kid that's going through school for artificial intelligence. This guy has his master's in the in that. It's because they're students and they can't really figure it out hey, yet. Hey, hey, okay. Yeah. So shout out to Stephen Williams. He is the second student that has reached out to me to shit on uh, your theory uh, and argue. <laughs> so the with ratio me. is what two to five. There we go. So oh far? yeah, but you get some regular else like kid who's just DMing you like plastic Bro. robot arms, and be like, oh yeah, show Adam this. <laughs> Bro, Elon Musk. I've got the students that are actually going through artificial intelligence You're right now. So listen, yeah, I've seen it. Hi Adam, I love the podcast. I've enjoyed you and Sal disagreeing about the robot hype recently. I'm currently studying artificial intelligence as a master's student. Thought you may be interested to know that. We are a lot further away from intelligent robots than you would think. In fact, I'm not convinced we can see functional robots within our lifetime. Artificial intelligence is an excellent at solving very specific problems, but lacks common sense or versatility. It would take far too long a message to fully explain why. However, you might want to tell Sal to calm down with his hype. A few examples of the limitations. Imagine you were out with your robot and you drop your wallet. Somebody asked you if you lost your wallet and you tap your pocket to check. Your robot would not have a clue why you tapped your wallet. This is a big issue as it means without implicit instruction instructions, robots or AI systems are unable to make decisions from a very basic common sense. This is very similar to what the other student was talking about if it had a scratch let's on the plate. Let's go back it won't to our be pre-qualifiers. Thank you. Because I knew he would do this. He just changed yes, the context of Yes, he just changed the context of it. So it has to be able to wash now a dirty to be, dish and uh, put in the dishwasher. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. We, I'm not talking about self-aware. And self that's programming it, though. Yeah, but versus yeah, it no, it's not. AI. That's the problem because it won't know the difference. And that's what the other student was talking about. It won't know right. the difference between a scratch or dirt on the plate. It'll keep trying to keep it clean or Unless you program that in. Right. That takes a lot of programming, which is a couple years. You know, and all the variables. Away. You gotta yeah. think you have dirt Listen, that runs this way, you can't program them in. It's not gonna be a robot that's self-aware, singularity style. It's gonna clean a dish like your dishwasher will. So that means one out of every fifty. The truth is, is that something as 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 what you guys think is dumb and simple as doing the dishes requires more common sense than actually landing on the moon. That is more technical and precise and can be programmed where something like washing a dish, knowing if is it dirty, is that food, is that paint, that takes common sense, which the AI lacks there. And your guys' argument has been my argument you, is people keep trying to shin, send you guys bullshit these are just <laughs> random people the two people that i've had that have messaged me these long old messages regarding this oh, both MIT are students. in school yeah. for artificial intelligence Again, but they're students yeah. 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 so it's all confusing hey. Hey, you know like when you're yeah. in school i wish there was like a little little like emoji or something of like adam like digging a <laughs> you, me yeah. digging you know hey you are when, digging hey when when the robot is washing <laughs> dishes it's a basic robot that washes your dishes and puts it away but before commercial flights to the moon are happening, we are going to take all your okay, argument. So the pre-qualifiers for that is they're literally yes. taking a common person, uh, like you would take a, a flight Dude, to Europe. It's, it's going right? to be a montage video of all of all these things that you've said. With music in the background, it's gonna be so great. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I like it. It's it's a well, good. Uh, uh, according to my artificial intelligence students that are going through this stuff, it might not happen race. in our lifetime. For your argument. So I don't know if mine's going to happen either. So we'll never hey. have this montage going on. Hey, <laughs> we'll continue with their grandkids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Listen, listen, make sure I win uh, the bet. Uh, I'll die. Yeah. <laughs> I, know, so. yeah. I just, anyway. I don't, I, I think that it's uh, it, as simple as it may seem. It's a lot more complex because of the that's, common yeah, sense. Yeah, that's every, that's yeah. all, that's all it's, AI stuff. Yeah. Just, and that's like, they, that's speaking, why we, we haven't seen them take over bro, like on any industry yet. Speaking of AI. So I read this very fascinating article. There's these, I can't remember who it was, but it was a pretty high ranking scientist who wrote this kind of letter warning uh, companies and saying, look, we're going to get to the point where AI algorithms are going to be able to hack humans. Okay. So hear me out, right? They're going to be able to, they're going to be able to read all, they're going to know all the decisions you make online. They're going to know uh, how your you body, like, what you don't like, if you're sweating, if yes, you're hot, how your body physically reacts, things that you're not even aware of to things that you see, articles that you read, things that you do. It'll know how to trigger certain emotions in you. It'll know you better That's why than the you camera's been on this whole time. The right. two-way camera, it's been looking at you. Right. So it's going to hack you so well 
that it's going to manipulate you and you're totally going to deny that you're being manipulated or that it's even having well, any control over you. Give me an example of what you're saying right okay, now. Okay, so. so an example would be this, right? So, and this is kind of a silly example, but it's- Like I all your tells? Well, so it's like this, right? Um, hyper palatable food, right? We've engineered food to be so hyper palatable that, that obesity is now so common that a majority of people are obese, even though we know we're killing ourselves. Because what we've done with this food is we've essentially hacked our systems and people can't help themselves. Or it's like drugs, right? Drugs can be so appealing that it just, you know, your willpower and discipline doesn't necessarily help so what you. are you saying that there there'll be like an alert so like my this this ai will be able to go like adam you're overeating you're overeating you know and give no, me a, a warning that, no like, ai will will be able to read and trigger you so effectively through many different means that it will be able to hack you to the point where it'll get you to do it'll it manipulate wants. you yeah it'll make you i know could, i'm still looking for the example what it, give me an example of what you're let's saying say it right wants now. you to buy a product or a political party wants you to be upset okay or, so how how would it go about doing that it, it knows what you like like what triggers you, the It'll things find that you like read, an image or something for you to look at, things that cause yeah. your your pulse to speed up or slow down, your pupils. It knows how the human brain works, so it'll 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 put all these things together so perfectly that you'll be manipulated. So you'll you'll read an article and and it's a combination of things: hear something, see something, see a different color. It'll hack your systems to the point where you're going to be like, man, I'm just pissed. We need to do this. Not realizing that there was AI. Yeah, the only thing I can think of is if you're on social media and it presents a series of articles, videos, pictures that puts you in a certain state of mind that makes you 80% more likely to buy a certain thing. Right. That's, that's the only thing I can see it. Right. Like that's, I, don't, I don't see any other thing. But that, think of it to the yeah, next surface, level. It'll always be consumer driven. Right? Yeah. Like so think of it to the next level. Products. Right. So think of it this way. And Matt, so they're pretty good at it. Right. So they know that they can, if they, if you're on social media often, they could probably get you to move in a direction, you know, let's say 70% of the time, take that to the next level. You know, maybe it's a song that they could throw on top of it and it's a color and it's the way that it's presented and the speed that it's presented and the article that follows it up huh. by hacking into your your emotions and your physical body. I mean, we're kind of already doing that. With You're the right. Way we advertise. It's been a grand experiment. Yeah. Even yeah. Social media. But this guy saying a big part of that. this guy saying that AI will get so good at it that we're going to literally get hacked. Mm -hmm. That will totally get hacked. So which one of you guys looked more mm -hmm. into, I, I figured the out of the three of us, it would be more likely you two than me, looked more into the Facebook meta, meta thing. Oh, yeah, I read, yeah. I read a bunch on so that. So what is, what is, it, what, is it like what we've talked about or speculated yeah. as far as like this living in this virtual word, the unplugged plug thing I've been saying yeah, forever? So, is it like going to be like that? Yeah, so that? the example was that we spend, like even now today, we probably spend, you know, 30 or 40% of our time um, – interacting with humans online, whereas before it was never, right? You never interacted with humans digitally. It was always in person, uh, over the phone maybe, and that's about it. Now it's like, you know, 40% of the time. And it's getting to the point where the younger generations are more concerned about their appearance. Right, their avatar that they yes. mold and, and make uh, unique in terms of like how they're going to personalize Yeah, it. so the metaverse essentially will be where you'll do everything that way. Every, almost all your interactions with other people will be online. Whether you're going to the gym and it's virtual and mm -hmm. or you're going to the store and you're picking out items, you're talking with people. And so that avatar, that whole situation is going to be how you spend most of your time. And that's what they're essentially talking about. So wow. yeah. I know well, that's going to be weird. Well, and yeah, because really they, they've been speculating on what they're going to do. Because when they acquired Oculus a long time ago, I was paying attention. I'm like, I wonder how they're going to use this for games or like they're going to throw this in the platform somehow. But you know, I'm sure he's using that platform now to kind of create this whole virtual way of, of conducting business and, you know, it being its own, like, mm -hmm. uh, commerce. It's only going to be weird for us old fuddy-duddies. Everybody else is going <laughs> to- They're already doing it. Really, yeah, yeah, like your kids are already getting closer and closer to that, right? So it's not going to be that weird for them. Well, well I stand actually by probably... this, dude. Like, I've, I've said this before, but, like, uh, what- you know, sort of the Sims and World of Warcraft and all this kind of stuff. Like, I swear to God, it's already like now, like the reality is becoming what that was, you know, in terms of them being able to create themselves, tell, like have everybody, you know, call them whatever they want. Like, it's just, you just make up, you know, your character. Well, like you look at my kids, right? My, my son's 16 and he, now he's starting to go out and meet up with friends. But still, if you add up the time that he spends with friends in person, 
versus the time that he spends with friends online, it's still it's it's still mostly online if you compare the two the two. And that's quite common. I was talking to him the other day about like cars. And I was like, hey, what kind of cars are you? You know, he's a 16-year-old boy. What kind of cars are you and your friends into? He's like, oh, you know, we kind of don't really don't care. And you look this up and you see that, and, and this is, there's a point to this, you see that kids are getting their driver's licenses later and later, really don't have interest in that because it doesn't mean the same thing as when we when we were kids, getting your license and having a car meant you could it's be freedom. with your friends. Yeah, you're, you're I mean, you got access. I, yes and no, right? Like, the, I, I think more what plays a bigger factor in that is that, uh, Owning a car is expensive. A car payment, gas, insurance. Uh, using an Uber five times in a week is not expensive. And it still allows you the same freedom. F a 15 so, and 16 year olds ain't using Uber. You have to be 18. What? Yeah, you can't call Uber if you're 16 and get what? on an Uber. Yeah. Who told you that? You can't. Doug? Yeah, look. look <laughs> I think Sal might be right. Yeah. Your, your, your daughter doesn't use Uber? No. no. Yeah, you can't use Uber unless you're 18. What? Yeah, I have yeah. never even heard that. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Now, I mean, I've never. Or you can't open so an account know. with a credit card on it. At, it it has to be present with if, an adult to in order to use it. Yeah, I have never heard that mm -hmm. before. Yeah, is that true? Yeah, anyone under age of eighteen, yeah, they will not pick up. No. Wow. Yeah, it's too much of a liability. Yeah, it is a liability. But for the listen, driver. here's the deal, though. They're not even if they could. They're they're online. They're they're playing games with each other yeah, in their yeah. headsets. They're talking. It's all virtual and getting a car is like not that big of a deal or getting your license is not big of a deal because, oh, I, I hang out with my friends at night when we put my headset on and we mm -hmm. talk to each other and I see his image or, you know, and this is just how That's it why is. I don't think it'll be that big of a leap though, too, for them to be plugged in completely. Yeah, I know. It'll look very appealing to them because yeah. it, it's going to be cool for them where us will be like, dude, you're just, you're getting more sucked into that. So I know, right? Well, I know. I watched that movie. It reminds me of the. I, I just watched Free Guy finally. Oh, oh you good. did. Huh? What a movie, huh? what a smart movie. Yeah, yeah. That very, was very intelligent. Fun made. one. Yeah, yeah, really fun, funny, smartly made. You know, intelligently made. Yeah, yeah I like that. I one. thought it was. It was a cool. Yeah, I watched it with my daughter. She thought it was blue you know, shirt guy. I like the <laughs> the jacked version of it. How the hell? Who are you? Catchphrase. No. Uh, hell with <laughs> you. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> I'll juice the. I'll juice to the gills. I know it's pretty yeah. funny. Anyways, uh, so what's this rumor that I heard? Have you guys heard about? Except, so President Biden went to visit the Pope at the Vatican. Oh God, you talking about? Is this real? Did he really shit his pants? That's that's the rumor, dude. That apparently, not, it just sounds like he's getting yeah. trolled right now. Nobody, like he didn't troll. really shit his pants. Come on, listen. I who mean, knows? It's, it's been getting worse though. His speeches have been getting worse and worse. It just seems like he's I, it's I, believable. You know, like, like, it's, I hate talking about that type of stuff. He's dude. early stages. Well, I of don't dementia. either. Like, because it, you're you're no better than the people who were just three years ago that hung on everything that Trump did. Well, you know did saying? you see? Like, the, talk about his policies and the shit he's not doing. Sure. Like his but dementia, did you watch, shitting his pants. Like that's all. Well, no, dementia is legit. Look, here's no, the deal. No, if you watch concerned. the guy, you watch no. the guy. He's got early stages, especially if you knew him. Before he's been in politics for so long, doesn't he doesn't matter. He's before. not making any decisions, anyways. Yeah, <laughs> he's not exactly. making any of the decisions. They, just, they never are. You know what I'm saying? It's a, there's a bunch of people that are pulling strings that are doing stuff. So that's true. I don't like getting all they, that's identity politics. Yeah. You know that but, better than well, anybody. Well, no, that's not identity. That's literally saying your uh, your commander in chief might not be a he's, sound he's mind. Incapable. Did you see him at the climate change meeting or talks or whatever? No. And he's like sitting there and he's. <sighs> Starts falling asleep while he's uh, while while he's listening. That's I can't really consume bad, anymore, dude. I, know, I can't. I can't. I can't consume anymore. anymore. He is, he's the president now, so I'm I'm rooting for him to be better as much as I possibly uh, can. And it's uh, it's sad, but it's like, dude, uh, uh, that stuff sucks so much energy from you. And I've seen so many so many of my family members and close friends in the last three to four years. Like, yeah. I've never seen so much division over uh, the political climate illness ever, everywhere, dude. Well, never. Hey, speaking of uh, division, did. Did you hear about so Michael Myers from Halloween? Did you hear yes. about the whole thing? <laughs> no, I haven't. So Chris he, Delia did a little spoof on this. You haven't he, seen this yet? Nah. There were some people that were saying that there was, was articles written about homophobic it. Homophobic because he killed the, a gay couple on the, the newest couple. Halloween. On the last one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he kills everybody. That's I know. <laughs> Equally. That's the funny part. Yeah. That's the funny part. If anything, he's yeah. not like a big slowly being inclusive now. Uh, That's come on. What's up? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like everybody's on chopping. Uh, it, it, it cracks me up that people get up okay. in arms. Now when he's a murder. He's like he kills. Yeah, people, but here's, so here's, here's in it. Here's the challenge. Though, okay, so I, I, I right away my other side of my brain goes, okay, this is great marketing. So if you are you are the makers uh, of Halloween, uh, okay. 
and that you have a ho hopefully a blockbuster Outrage film going out again. Yeah, and we know that this goes viral faster than anything to make this stupid fake outrage stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if it's them who leaked the story to start with. Well, or or it's five so people on Twitter. Yeah. Exactly. And they get shared because yeah. it's right. ridiculous. Right, one or the other. You know what I'm saying? Like, either one, yeah. they stage the story themselves, so people just start talking about how ridiculous That's and stupid point. it is. It's always like, they don't want this to... And it's like, who's they? You know, yeah. and then you go back, and it's it's literally like a group, and you don't even know if they're foreign actors or they even live here. That's why I'm States. so careful now to jump on some, anything like that that's like, get you, your blood boiling I or know. get all like emotional about it. It's like, you know what? Like, yeah, dude. Don't be fooled if it's the actual people that, <laughs> that you think you're supporting by fighting over that actually put out that negative well, news just it's to get like you the, talking about it's it. It's like the protest that yeah. happened at Netflix over Chappelle. It was like a dozen people. Yeah. You know that, right? Right. There was like a dozen people there, so it really wasn't that big of a deal, but it made so much news yeah. you know, that it makes you think that it's a really big deal. You know what? Speaking of, here's you have to be that way with like everything now. It's crazy. Yeah. You sent over an article uh, this morning, yesterday. Was it well, this I morning? screwed up with Disney. I'll, I'll admit that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, they one. did not buy Pornhub. They did not buy Pornhub. <laughs> hey, <laughs> yeah. hey. No, real you, quick, you sent over sorry about that. Well, you, real quick, Adam, because he said Disney. Did you see that they shut down in Shanghai and quarantined like 34,000 people because of one COVID case? You guys see this? What? Whoa. So Disneyland in China, in Shanghai, there was one COVID case, 34,000 people quarantined. They have to stay in their hotel rooms for two weeks for one case Dang. of COVID. Wow. Crazy, right? Massive, yeah. That's a lot over one thing. That's well, pretty insane. Right, right. Anyway, so I want to hear what you say about the No, story. no. Oh, so, I, so I wanted you first to share because one of the, when I'm, like, I, I read a lot of stuff right now um, related to, like, uh, real estate and the market and what's going on. And mm -hmm. I do my best of actually following uh, people that are on both sides, people that think that the, the sky is going to fall on us anytime soon or we're going to, you know, the bottom's going to fall out. And then the other people that think that trees will grow to the sky, mm. right? So I, I do both so I can get kind of a balance. And I saw you sent over an article this morning that I had already read like two days before. In fact, I sent it to Doug on, was it Friday night? I sent that to you? Friday or Saturday night when I sent you that article about the Zillow? Oh yeah, I saw that. So, so I had sent it over to Doug already and Doug was like, you can see like, oh my God, or what that. I was like, yeah. well, calm down. And I was like- No, you know what's interesting about that? So basically what it says is that Zillow is, they had this operation where they were buying properties and then flipping them at a, a Well, the headline says Zillow sells off 93% yes. of its properties for a, a five to 15% yeah. loss than what they-, they So bought. it makes you think, oh my God, the market's crashing. Yes. But really what it is, is that they were testing out this algorithm yes. that could find the best houses to buy and flip hmm. and they they so just what it, went into it hard and it, apparently the algorithm didn't work well they, so so what it is is that okay so zillow is one of the uh largest uh, home buyers in the united states right so they are buying homes like in the hundreds so imagine uh i mean you guys know what it takes just to, to sign the deal for one house the process the headaches all the yeah. things you have to go through imagine doing that on a scale of hundreds like the, the amount of systems that you would need in place just to be able to do that well one of the things is they had software that would predict where this based off of where the housing market was where it's going and so they needed to and because it's so competitive right now which we've dealt with this before losing all these deals they need to they need to get past all that bullshit and so they knew oh we could overbid on and all these all these houses and it's okay yeah get it now save three to four weeks on haggling back and forth losing possible deals we know we'll make it up when we put twenty thousand dollars in construction blah 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 whatever right well, what ends up happening is that they were so aggressive on all those deals that they won all their deals and instantly get flooded with two, 300 properties that they didn't necessarily all want, all at overpriced and on a market that's kind of starting to slow down to flatten a little bit. Mm. And so they're selling, they're selling off a bunch of these and they're selling off as a loss. So you have some of the people that think the sky is falling going like, oh my God, Zillow, one of the biggest uh, no. real estate buyers is selling off hundreds of homes. They're actually selling them off for a loss. They see the writing on the wall that this is the crash is coming and right. they're, they're like, willing that's to take some indication. Of, yeah. Uh, but the truth is they're worth, they're, they're worth a billion, billions of dollars. Yeah. And losing a few hundred thousand dollars is a speed bump for them. The, to apparently, this is a, something that they've had in place since 2018. Yeah. And what it, what I read was is they have this algorithm that they put together that was supposed to, you know, according to them, accurately predict the best house and the price they could pay and how much they could make. So essentially, they were trying to hack real estate investment yeah. right mm -hmm. but it didn't it didn't pan out yeah well <laughs> what no didn't really pan out was they actually they they won all the offers because they went so they the, the algorithm yeah. was so aggressive and they started overbidding and what was happening in this this run right now 
is you've had people, you know, some, a lot of these people are putting their houses up. And this is what we kind of seen right now in the last, like if you pay attention to real estate in the last six months or so, is there's been this kind of what people think are flattening or we're starting to see the go down. And a lot of that's not like every realtor and all the states that I talk to people, they're like, all it is, is that everybody was making so much money in the last two years that you started getting people, they put their house up like, well, my house is only worth 1.5, but let's throw it up there for 1.7, see what happens. Yeah. So everyone started just way overpricing their houses and then you have a computer that's just supposed to read and predict all the numbers that it's seeing and then it goes oh let's overbid all that and so they got stuck with all these homes that they way yeah. overpaid in a short period this, of time so th this reminds me of how forever people have been trying to put together an algorithm that predicts the stock market because if you can if you can find an actual formula that will predict you know, investments that way, you're the sky's the limit. You're, you're, you're Biff from back to the future. You're a trillionaire. The right? problem with that is that both those markets are are dependent on people's emotions. Correct. So and trying to predict that in mass. It's impossible. Good luck. Yeah, you could be great. And, and, you know, both stocks and real estate, you can be very uh, calculated to minimize your risk. But lots of things don't make sense. But none of, yeah, a lot of times it just doesn't make sense. Like Even like something like this, that's why I wanted to talk about the Zillow thing, because that Zillow thing could actually trigger a bunch of people to get scared. Mm -hmm. Forget that it's based in any real logic of what's really happening yep. in the market, but it's enough for people to go like, oh my God, because people, they see it's happening and then, oh, and everyone pumps the yep. brakes. But a lot of people at one time pumping their brakes could cause the dip. Now, there are ways that you could theoretically game a market. Like Zillow's got enough purchasing power to where they could go into a market and make make everybody think that the market's going up and then flip their houses, but that would be illegal, right? You've seen that in the stock... Well, forever we've seen that in the stock market with so these I think they pump already, and dump. I think they actually already do that and get away with it a little bit. You'll see like... And I think Zillow and Redfin or some of these the, that they both are like this where they might own 70 of the 200 homes in a in a small kind of rural area. And so easily they can manipulate the rents and the housing. And I don't know how much of it is technically illegal. That yeah, I was going to say, how legal is that? Yeah, That's... I mean, you would think it would be illegal, but I also right. don't know how that they, they, they... Interesting. They, like just think about that. You, let's say you go into like a growing town, right? So let's say like Fort Worth, right? So you go into Fort Worth, let's just say, just these are five hypothetical numbers. Don't try and hold me to this exactly. Let's say there's 500 homes in this kind of suburb, right? Or yeah. whatever. That's a growing suburb. And pretend you're Zillow or Redfin. And, and of the 500, you control 200 is, uh, of those homes, which they have the power to do something like that and then what's to stop them from inching up on all two or under the houses a hundred dollars of rent on, yeah. on all of them and unless you're in a state that could, has rent control they could legally do that and that's happened so that's happening i think with both redfin and zillow in some of these areas where they they kind of dominate uh, a neighborhood that's really interesting i know yeah all right so i wanted to bring something to you adam because i thought it was absolutely harris so, so mm. previous episode i had uh on youtube i had asked people to try to guess what your terrible idea oh, was, God. Okay. okay, which I'm not going to reveal because <laughs> you, his idea is so bad <laughs> that I can't even say it. Do okay. people get such FOMO about but, this forever? But dude? you know what's funny? I read the comments, and the majority of the bad ideas that they thought were mm. one of them was Adam wanted you guys to get to smoke yeah. weed or drink alcohol before the podcast. <laughs> like we've done that. <laughs> Do they forget? Okay, this yeah. is how I know we have a lot of new listeners on YouTube yeah. because. That's what we did for the first year, at least, <laughs> yeah. of the podcast. Was there like, was no convincing that. The constant done. button just... It was on air. It wasn't even before the podcast. It would be on air when we do it. And you can hear it in the podcast, yeah. by the way. But oh, I was reading those comments and I was... I, a lot of people dying. were asking, uh, or someone made comments about um, my voice really changing. And uh, I thought maybe it was like raspy because of the, the, the smoking and doing so that. And I forgot, Doug reminded me. He's like, don't you remember? You used to come straight over from Orange Theory where you were yell yeah, yelling in a class for like four hours. And I was like, oh, that's and why. Your voice would crack a lot. Yeah, it would, that, that's yeah. right. It would crack and it was that. all raspy. Four and was, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> come on, I forgot Brenda. all about that. But, <laughs> like, dude, your voice hella changed. Feel the burden. <laughs> <laughs> Keep running aimlessly. <laughs> he jumped. <laughs> he jumped. <laughs> Order. Yeah, show up in his yeah. trainer outfit. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm ready to podcast. All right, <laughs> whoa, man, you've been screaming. <laughs> Dang, dude, you're all energetic. Did you, uh, did you guys see the the big acquisition that just happened with um, um, Body Armor? Oh, uh, wait a minute. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, wasn't it who bought them? It was, was it a, Nike. No, it was a big deal. It was right? a big company. Yeah, yeah it, it was, was actually like the largest acquisition ever at five point six billion dollars. Oh, dude, when's billion. the last time you even heard of Body Armor? Like, I know that they existed. So, when you, I saw them, but I'm like, I've never did seen. Did you them know anywhere. that Kobe Bryant was one of the first early investors? In Shut all that? your face. So his his uh, how much is he going to make? Four hundred million. 
Wow. So they just sold at $5.6 billion to Coca-Cola. Wow. Um, and that's that whole Gatorade market. So Gatorade yeah. and, and, and uh, Under Armour is not even the biggest player of the all the energy drinks, right? You have Gatorade. And what's the other big one that I, I can't think of the name? Powerade. Right uh, yeah, Powerade, right? So Powerade. But is that it's own- body armor, not Under Armour. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's bo- right. Body armor is the drink. Yeah. Am I saying that right? Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, yeah, it's body armor. You've seen it before. It's like the red and black label. Yeah, no, it's billion? but but I haven't 5. seen it 6, anywhere. I didn't even know it was popular. Like five, where? I, I know me too. Hey, five point six billion. That market's interesting. It's, that's that's why I mean, very, I mean a lot of people don't know this, but we you know, we invested in L M N T. Yeah. We think that they're gonna Superior probably product. Yeah, we think that they're <laughs> well. Gonna... It is. It is. A, it's a better product in a space where obviously there's lots of room, and it's for... palatable. That's what sells, by the way. I, sports drinks. It tastes better. It's more. It's yeah, superior. No sugar. And they've got it. Either. They're getting it in the hands of. And once it starts getting in the professional athletes, which it's, that's where it's at right now, you'll see. Yeah. yeah. So it's ex, it's exciting. Yeah. No, I thought you guys would really like that. Yeah. That, no, that's interesting. Since that's in a similar 400, space. Four hundred. So I, I guess we could do the math. If it's five billion and you got four hundred million, what does that mean? What What was his so he investment? Had a, is that about a million, Doug. Let's see if you could do that. He had about a million invested in it. <laughs> that would be- well, you saw Pathwater got into uh, Whole Foods. Yeah, right? that's right. Which yes, is, was that's, another big one. That's mm-hmm. really cool. Another, another. Did you get company? that math, Doug? I did not get it. Uh, uh, come on, hey, listen, Doug. we threw it too fast. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, we were drilling this earlier this morning. What happened, man? Oh, yeah, <laughs> math problems. Yeah, no, I thought that was. I thought that was pretty exciting. What was the other one? I do have to throw out there though. I was driving oh, back from Paso Robles and, and got to listen to all of the Jewel episode. That I heard Joe that was Rogan, amazing. Like literally the best podcast I've, I've listened to. Really? Yeah. And it's mainly it, obviously because she story. has an insane story, and and she's just such a positive force. Like it, she she does all this stuff for uh, depression, anxiety, like and has like really actionable steps um, to you know to, to to sort of take over and take charge of your life again, and it, very inspirational. But like her story is so insane, takes you through so many twists and turns, and you know her rise to success. And I would, the, you know, you're I like the expect people that. that that came after her and like family members that stole. It. You're like, like dude, the fourth or fifth person that I've it, heard said it was like the best podcast. And she's ever. so articulate. I, I had no idea. Like she's like so well spoken. Um, and honestly, it was it was a ride. The whole episode was amazing. You ever wow. listen? You ever watch her yodeling videos when she was uh, younger? No, but I mean, I've been a fan. Like I Crazy. enjoy her music just because I know she, you know she sounds like a legit Crazy artist. talented, but yeah, crazy, she's, crazy. She's talented. always had it. But then she disappeared, right? Uh-huh. She just took, she well, yeah. When then she gets into that too. How like I mean, she was making, uh, selling a million um, uh, albums. But back when you had CD sales and yeah. all that, a million albums a month wow. for an entire year. Wow. wow. Which, you know, like really selling those for like 15 to like 20 yeah. bucks. Yeah, yeah. You know? I like her. What's wow. one of her songs? Come on, Justin. We will save you so... I can't. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> she's, way, she's way out of my range. I wanted the name. I don't have... You didn't have to sing it, but... I thanks. know what I was thinking of that I wanted to bring up because we were talking real estate stuff. That's what was on my mind. Uh, uh, Mark Anderson buys uh, the most expensive house ever bought in, in California be past Bezos. Bezos bought the one for 160 something million, 160 something million, 177 million dollars. Malibu. What house. the hell is in the house? Uh, it's on Malibu, dude. So it's the property more than anything else. Wow. So it's like probably a big chunk of land that's right on right on the beach or right on the your face. That of the would water. be so weird to live in a, a, a house like that. Well, you know it's, what's I'd crazy is at 177. Yeah. Maybe Doug can do this math for us because what's uh, California property taxes 1.56 or something like that. Doug, is that right? Oh, how much you gonna owe? Yeah, like a month. Like wise? even that's what people don't realize yeah, with something like that. Right? You let's say you have 200. Let's million. say someone gave it to you. Yeah, you'd have you, to sell it. Yeah, yeah you, can't, you can't. Right, you like can't say like say it. someone bought it outright for you. You still have to pay the property tax on that thing and property tax on one. 177 million. What's the, at what's least 1.7 million if it, at one percent? Well, yeah, that would be at one percent. Yeah, 1.7. It'd was, be more than that. Yeah, yeah so probably 2.5. So if someone gave you the house, like we better sell this real quick. I can't because your, your monthly gift. payment on property tax would be closer to like 20 something thousand, Dude. probably more. That's rough off my head. 20 20 thousand dollars a month. And that, by the way, that's Mark sales. Andreessen, not oh, Mark I thought Anderson. Anderson. Mark Andre, what he, what is he like a fat? Or he bought it from a fashion mogul, dude, right? And I don't know what he's a is he a VC? Yeah, fashion mogul. Yeah, he was. I think he was started with uh, was it Netscape? That was his first thing. I'm not sure. Oh, uh, he's an investor. Um, yeah, he's a VC guy. Yeah, but and he's he been around Silicon a, Valley for a long time. Yeah. And he and he bought it, but he did the big news yeah. for it was because that's I mean, the, the that's the most guy. expensive house ever sold in California before. It would just feel strange to live in a house like that. I wouldn't feel I don't know. It feel weird. Oh, it like, feel good. 
No, both feel real good. Yeah, dude. You yeah, fucking dude. feel real good. Kind, <laughs> kind of like kingly. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the Where's the kids in the you know in the East Wing? All right, call them up real yeah. quick. Yeah, have them take an Uber to get to the kitchen. I mean, you have dinner. You would You would you have, have to a have butler, a, an insanely amount of money always coming in in order to do that. It would be hard. Yeah, you, not you just, just you couldn't just be worth. You need a staff million, of people to help like you three, like manage the exactly. Place. Yeah. It's not just property taxes. What do you think his freaking gardener bill is? Right, right, and house cleaning and all that stuff like that. Yeah, no, all those. Housekeeping is probably thousands of dollars a month just yeah. to have someone clean your toilets. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, constantly. Yeah, forget yeah. it. <laughs> I thought that was pretty fascinating, though. Be cool for a minute, though. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying this episode. Look, if you eat a lot of protein, you might have some digestive issues sometimes. This is quite common with a high-protein diet or just a high-calorie diet if you're on a bulk trying to speed up your metabolism. One thing that can help are digestive enzymes, but not any digestive enzymes. You want the best digestive enzymes. Now, we work with a company called Masszymes. These are digestive enzymes designed specifically for fitness people. I use them regularly. I'll take two capsules before my high-protein meals, and I notice better digestion and better assimilation, meaning I'm probably using the protein more effectively for the places that I want to use the protein for, my muscles. If you head over to masszymes.com, that's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S.com forward slash mind pump, uh, and use the code mind pump 20, that's mind pump 20, you can get 20% off your purchase. All right, here comes the rest of the show. All right. Our first question is from C Greenwood32. What are your thoughts on the raised heel squat for quad development? Oh, I love it. Absolutely yeah. love it. If you, if you raise your heels by placing them on something like a, a block or you wear squat shoes or anything that raises the heel but is stable, it increases knee flexion and extension and reduces the activation at the hip. So it's more quad focused than it is glute or hamstring focused. And in an extreme case, you do something like a, a sissy squat where you're actually mm -hmm. pushing the hips forward as you're doing this. But it's a great way to hit the quads. Like, try doing a front squat with your heels elevated. Well, that's how we used to do. I mean, before, I mean, you were really the person that introduced me to sissy squats. I didn't even know, you know, what those were. But that's how we used to really try to, like, get more activation of the quads was to get our heels up on these blocks and then do front squats heavy loaded. Uh, and we do that, you know, in programming for football as well. Justin's like, I ain't doing anything that says sissy first. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, for, that's for sissies. sissies. Yeah. Man, that's, that's man, I'll put my heels on a block, but I ain't doing yeah. an extra. So it's called sissy yeah, anything. Yeah, that's right. I need masculine <laughs> squats. Yeah. No, yeah, it's, I think you just. Great. I think it's. Uh, I, I what's happened is uh, squat shoes have become trendy, and so you see a lot of people wearing them to squat, thinking that that's the way you're supposed to squat. At least that's what I see in the gym. Like I see a lot of people that they're not wearing squat shoes because they're like, I'm trying to target yeah. my quads. They're like, this is what. They saw do. Olympic lifters using them. They thought it was cool, and they brought it right. in and just but squatted so, with them. To be fair, though, right, squat shoes will raise the heel, but it's not going to raise the heel as much as you would if you really – like if you're doing a goblet squat with yeah. your heels elevated – you're going to elevate your heels more than you'll get in a in a. Yeah, you'll shoes. raise them higher. That's sure. just like trying to to compensate for the lack there. of uh, ankle mobility. Yeah, that's a little more, and you are getting more quad activation. But when you're elevating your heels, you want them elevated a little more when you're doing like a, a heel ele elevated goblet squat or a front squat with your heels elevated. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's great. I think you know the the quad targeting exercise that used to be super popular was a leg extension. There's a little bit of value to a leg extension. But it it pales in comparison to doing some of these other exercises. Oh, especially where, that sissy squat or like a goblet squat with heels elevated. You're going to get a much better quad pump than yeah. you will from especially like if you understand how to focus on the quads, on the descent, and at the top, and really squeeze the quads. Like if you do a goblet squat with your heels elevated, with your feet relatively close together, and you really focus on the descent and feeling your quads, and then you come up and squeeze the, the quads hard at the top, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it fire. Maintain it, tension the whole time. Yeah, it'll... You'll get a crazy, crazy Not to mention, pump. it's, it's again, it's it's more functional than something like a leg extension. You know, And I know some people hate to hear that, like, oh, the functional word. There's the yeah. functional word on everything. It's like you're more likely to be on a hill and have to squat down in the squatted position than you are to be in a seated position and never have to kick your leg out. Right. I mean, it's that simple. So mm -hmm. getting strong in that position is not only probably better for quad development, but also just overall movement and in just real life that there may come a time when I'm picking my toddler up and I'm on a hill mm -hmm. <laughs> and I have the ability to do that with good strength and good control, you know? 
Next question is from Justin Lee. What are your thoughts on Mike Menser's heavy duty training? Oh, Change changed your life. Well, didn't it? It, it, it actually was. Uh, <laughs> it was duty. a very profound book for me, but it was uh, just generally in the whole muscle building world. So he's the intensity one, right? Is that right? Yeah. So a little background, right? Uh, so Mike Menser was a bodybuilder in the seventies, early eighties, um, and he was, you know, he never won Mister Olympia, but he had a very um, commanding physique on stage. Very smart. <laughs> kind of cerebral guy, very different. And during that time, the bodybuilding training was all about volume and frequency and angles. Arnold dominated bodybuilding at the time. So everything was about 20 something sets per body part, double split routines. And Mike Menser comes out and says, no, in order to trigger muscle growth, you just need to do one all out high intensity set of weights or resistance training. <coughs> Send the signal, leave it alone, right? And he got this from Arthur Jones. Arthur Jones was the inventor of Nautilus equipment. You know, the famous, uh, you know, experiment he did with Casey Viator that we've talked about uh, on the podcast. Uh, and so Mike Menser employed some of these techniques and built a great physique. He just, he took it too far. You know, on the one hand, you have the volume is king. On the other hand, you have, no, it's all about intensity. Mm -hmm. And they are inversely related, right? The harder you work out, the less volume you can do and vice versa. But neither one of them is the full answer. And I, I, I learned this through trial and error right. and through, I even did this on my clients. I actually would have clients do heavy duty workouts because I, oh, I was going through the period of kind of like experimenting. And you'll see them progress and then stop, just like with almost any other well, viable training. That's, that's the real magic behind all of these books, all of these methods of training is that if you've never trained this way before and then you go do it, you may see incredible results like you've never seen before, but it's not mm -hmm. that method of training. Why? It's because the novelty of that. Mm -hmm. And if you go do that forever and consistent and then read a different book yep. that has yeah. competing type of theories or ideas around training, you're going to see incredible results again. And the, the, that was, a, it took me over a decade to piece that together. Right. Cause I was, I fell into that trap. You of, try something at work. Yeah, oh, high reps. Oh, it's oh low reps. Yeah. Oh, it's going to failure. Oh, it's like, it's like, Oh, maybe what it is is that I've been doing this all the time and this is so different than that. So my body adapts and responds. Okay. Now I've been doing that for a long time. So damn near anything else, but that is going to show me. And so that's the real lesson is, and understanding human behavior, how we get, caught into doing this trap of the same stuff all the time. Well, it definitely yeah. ups the risk and the risk reward. So it's sort of, um, you know, balance with that. And uh, you do see like success from that, but then there's that thin line of like, you know, now I'm flirting with like a risky, uh, you know, type of a method where you see this sort of resurface. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with those like ARX machines. Um, oh, yeah. So it's like basically like a mechanized resistance. And so they try to like, really like intensify one rep so you do each phase of the contraction they like add you know more mm -hmm. to the strength curve uh within those so if it, it's like basically it's like cables you're like pushing as hard as you can you're holding for as hard as you can and then you're coming back in, in descent as hard as possible and so it's like the whole thing is like all intensity like short amount of reps but they're trying to sort of solve the, the 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 issue of it being such a riskier type of modality. Yep. But again, it 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 only lasts for so long, you know, before we're going to need to ex expose the it, body to something else. It oversimplifies uh, muscle adaptation or the adaptation of building strength and muscle. They say it's all about intensity, and so if you just go intense enough for one set, the trigger or the the wheels are set in motion. Then you just step away, allow your body to recover, and you should be able to build muscle up until you reach your genetic potential. It doesn't work this way. You can over-apply intensity as well. And by the way, volume and frequency also contribute to muscle. Otherwise, you wouldn't see mechanics with muscular forearms. Why do mechanics typically have muscular forms? They never go to failure. It's a lot of volume, a lot of frequency, right? Now, I'm not saying that's the only answer either. It's a combination of them, and you have to kind of move in and out of each of them to get your body to continue to respond. But look, if we were to look, even if we were to use bodybuilders as the example, the vast majority of bodybuilders out there train with more volume and don't go to failure all the time. There are a few that do, like Dorian Yates kind of trained this way, right? Mike Menser trained this way. There's a couple others. There was something called DC training that kind of was similar. I mean, Mike Menser went so crazy with this at one point that he would train people with his typical style, which was one 
all out set to failure per, per body part. And people would, his, he would have people work out two or three days a week. That was it. Then when they would stop responding, you know what his answer was? Less frequency. Okay. Then it means you need more recovery. So now I'm going to give you 10 days between body parts and then 14 days between, and it just, it didn't work. It, it stops working. Now do you, I, I don't, I don't believe that any of these guys that wrote any of these books only train that way either. Right? Do you think Mike Mincer only trained that way that he wrote in the book, or that was like a phase or a thing that he did, or that he he talked about it because he was marketing and selling you know the what book? I think. But then he probably actually trained a lot of different ways. I don't think it's sustainable. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, don't think so either. I think a lot. I think that happens still today. You see somebody market an idea, and it's like, oh, that's brilliant. But I don't think they 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 do that either. They use that. Oh, I've got this incredible physique that I've built. Now let's write a book around these few things. And it's like, they are not just doing those few things. You know, I used to think that, and I think to, to some extent that's true, but then there's this other side that, you know, when you, when you read about these people, you see them in interviews, like Dorian Yates did train the way that he said he did uh, for all of his Mr. Olympia wins. And he would literally do a few exercises per body part, one all out set to failure, and that's it per exercise. So for back, he'd do like three exercises, so three sets to failure, and that was it which for pro bodybuilding terms is super low volume. Now here's my explanation. I think that there's genetic variances between individuals that sometimes makes people respond exceptionally well to intensity so they can cut their volume way down, use intensity, and it just works really well for them. And then I think there's people on the other end of the spectrum. And I, I think there's people with frequency that are like that as well. So I think that there's general truths but your individual variants might make you work a little better one way or the other. And I'd also don't think it's permanent. I think as your body changes and you age and circumstances change, then what worked for you before may not work for you as well uh, as it did before. But this particular theory at the time or this book, it came out and it was so different and so radical against, in, you know, in comparison to what everybody else was saying that it didn't gain popularity. And it's probably because people all did high volume. And so they said, let me try this out. And then, oh my God, it totally works. Yeah. So it kind of, you know, it kind of blew up. But I do think there's some truth in what he says. I just don't think it's the it's the all out answer. And by the way, the best studies on resistance training and building muscle shows that going to failure is too much intensity most of the time. And that one set to failure or one hard set versus three hard sets for beginners is usually this it's just as fine. But as they get more advanced, more volume tends to produce better results. Um, and so we do have these general truths that we've already shown in studies. And, and this heavy-duty style training is probably not best for most people. Next question is from Marco Arcega. What are the top 10 essentials for building a home gym? Oh, Damn, yeah. 10? I don't even know if I have 10 in my Yeah, house. I don't know if I have 10. But <laughs> we should, I think we should PRX list some of the essentials. And we're done. Let's make the list here. A squat yeah. rack, we all agree. Yeah, yeah. I, the barbell, dumbbell, squat rack, adjustable bench. Well, I think you're done with that. was too fast there. I know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> would you say barbell? Barbell, dumbbells, adjustable dumbbells, okay. or so multiple dumbbells. Plates obviously go in with the barbells. I would assume it? that yeah. counts yeah. as your 10 essentials, right? Yeah. Or it comes in there. Uh -huh. uh, flat bench, incline bench. It, adjustable yeah, bench, You need right? both. Yeah. So, so, so a bench that you can adjust, so, yeah, right? Can so you adjust. can do incline or flat. Uh, you said barbells already, plates, dumbbells, plates. I mean, if, I mean, if I'm going to add to that, I mean, maybe a easy curl, easy curl bar. I mean, you don't you just name my garage gym that I've been working trap out in. bar. That's yeah, how, I've been working out like that for the last 15 years. I don't even have the easy curl bar. I literally have a barbell, have a plates, bar. dumbbells. Would you say a hard curl bar? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Easy. hard yeah. curl. Yeah. 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 Not, not easy, man. I mean, I, I would say this, though, to start. If somebody actually asked me this in person, I would say, all right, number one, what form of exercise do you enjoy the most? Because we have to start with that, right? Mm -hmm. You're most likely to be consistent. Like if you like suspension trainers and that's your favorite way to work out, then that's going to be number one on your essential that's crucial for me well yeah, to me to that's okay so i have a suspension trainer that's under it's a hundred dollars or what is ours 97 bucks or some shit right so it's under a hundred dollars you can have that piece of equipment and that can hang in there that could be one of your 10 easily yes yeah so i i think and that rubber bands that should yeah it that, should yeah. complement almost any gym because even if you're not a big uh, suspension train uh, training like training that much the, i think the priming aspect of it and uh -huh. you know rehab stuff and the like low intensity i think doing that it from and i'll be no the brand. weird one i gotta have a mace bell and i gotta have uh you know a kettlebell like at least a, a pair of kettlebells if i have to limit it to like two 
Uh, it's got to be at least like 255 pounds, so I could at least do a little bit of damage. Yeah, and since they said 10, you could throw a sled in there, and then you're pretty much done. Yeah. But, you know, Pete, it's funny because there's all, always this home gym, you know, home gym equipment being sold and the newest, latest, greatest piece of equipment. But it's it's honestly, literally, if you if you got a squat rack that was, you know, stable. I mean, PRX is, I think, one of the best, and it folds into the wall. The barbell, the dumbbells, adjustable bench. You're the vast majority of people that I could possibly train for most people's goals. You're done. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, and I think we're answering it this way because it says essential, because I don't think we think there's 10 essential things uh, for exactly. lifting weights. If you said, what are your 10 favorite pieces of equipment in there? Mm -hmm. We could probably list off some things like Viking press. And then we'd probably sure. add some things that we really like now that I, that might go in that 10. But man, you can, you can definitely, I mean, most of our programs you can run on four pieces of equipment or yeah. less, you know, as far Even as if you just had like uh, four sets of dumbbells or something, yeah, you know? like you'd be, you could do a lot of damage with that. Oh, right? I could, I, I used to train sometimes. Well, I used to do this all the time because clients would love it. I would train clients with one pair of dumbbells or I'd train them with like a couple sets of bands. Today, yeah. our whole workout is going to be done with bands and they would get a phenomenal workout and they loved it because they could see that we could achieve so much with such minimal equipment. There's a huge myth with fitness, especially with resistance training, that you need all kinds of equipment. And that's because when you go into the gym, what do you see when you go to the weight area? Yeah, that's how they sell you on the membership. You right? got so many pieces of equipment. Oh, there's the chest area. There's the back area. There's the, the shoulder area. Oh, cardio, you just need a bike. And then you can, the truth is, when it comes to resistance training, you don't need a lot of equipment. It's actually very inexpensive, and yeah. you could do everything. You could train everyone. And there's so much variety. Look, I tell you what, the... Arnold Schwarzenegger Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding. Okay, that's my my one of my favorite first, you know, exercise books. Ninety percent of the exercises in there are free weight, and there's like ten exercises per body part, all free weight based, all phenomenal. So that's pretty much all you Dude, need. Dude, I would get even crazier if you just threw me in the woods with an axe. Like, I'm, I'm going to town, <laughs> You're going to build dude. a house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chop it, you know, lifting rocks. That's all you need, man. Like Rocky from uh, Rocky IV? Yeah, exactly. Next question is from George YRX. Myths and facts on apple cider vinegar. I'll tell you the truth about that stuff. It's great for uh, baby back ribs. Yeah. Oh, it is. <laughs> it's, it's, that's your secret that's ingredient. What, I used it last night. So I was, I was making ribs last night, and I actually used that to hydrate the ribs. So that's you, all I use it for. Really. You know what it's, you know what it is, it, is it got some health benefits? Yeah, but it's for nothing, the gut, right? That's it's nothing it, special. Um, it's not like some miraculous. So for a second there, it was like super old, popular. It yeah. still kind of is. It's become, I don't know who started it. Was it a Tim Ferriss, Ben Greenfield type of biohack thing to have Everybody wants two, that table, one thing that two tablespoons like to start their day off yeah. every day, right? Yeah. To, to set your gut right and balance it out or some bullshit like that's been like the the trendy thing to do yeah it's got some i guess some antimicrobial properties and but you know what though if you have um for some people i know who have gut issues it's terrible like right. for me if i if i have apple cider vinegar on an empty stomach it's gonna i'm gonna kind of have a good time oh really it Absolutely. messes you up it does it does feel good on me so i i have i have taken it before like that where i because i'm trying to remember where i saw that first um but it's not like it's not noticeable. Yeah. It's not no, like, oh there, my God, that's all I had to do? Yeah, there <laughs> is there is Forget no- this whole fitness stuff. There is no miracle food. You know what? I'll use another example just to kind of illustrate this. For a second there, it, remember the acai berry? The, yeah. they, they grow, the it grows in the Amazon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it, or goji berries. Like, yeah. oh my God, they're so incredible. Yeah. They're chock full of antioxidants. It's like the what, one degree different than a blueberry. Yeah. You, it's, it's literally just exotic. The, it's literally like yeah, the same thing. Like did you, you know break, that? You know the truth is yeah, blueberries yeah. is better. No, a si a cy berry was became one of the. Okay, they made. Uh, it's because we didn't know what it was. Nobody in America really used it. There was like a few it's, places it's in the world you could find these acai local. berries or whatever, and you had companies like Monavi and some of these yes. that they bottled it all up and and promoted all about like Brazil or antioxidants or yeah. and tried to claim that it like, cured cancer and all these people and it's like literally you could go have a a, a half pound of blueberries and get the exact same benefits. You want to know that. what's funny? Here, Okay, this is true now. Again, there is no miracle food, but let's just say that all the common foods that we eat now, we're not familiar with, and we just discover them. So scientists just discovered all the common foods that we eat, and they stumble upon the chicken, egg, and red meat. You know what those two foods would be labeled as? Oh, Superfoods. Yeah. Yeah. Super. Red meat literally 
could sustain you and provide you with every single essential nutrient. Now, I'm not saying it's ideal, by the way. Okay, so let me back up for a second. I'm not saying you should just eat meat. Yeah, I know there's people out there with the carnivore diet, whatever. No, that's not ideal. But what I am saying is, red meat will you will not you'll probably not have a nutrient deficiency yeah. and you'll survive for a long time or maybe forever. It's part of the just essential macronutrient classification. Yeah, same thing with eggs, like a perfect protein and the yolk is chock full of all these incredible things. But because we're so familiar with these foods, yeah. I couldn't come out and say, you know, steak, the super, like everybody's like, well, I eat steak all the time. Yeah. Just like I couldn't come out with blueberry juice and sell it like they do so with what is acai it? juice. Do, Doug, are you, aren't you an apple cider vinegar guy? Other- uh, I did a long time ago, but not recently. It's, is that what it is? It just is it supposed to just promote good gut health? Isn't that like the big thing from it? I mean, yeah, and they'd say it's anti-inflammatory, and you know, you could it's supposed to like extend your life or something like some what crazy yeah, that I didn't know. No. I think I th- people use it for dieting as well. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, drink. I mean, it's just uh, you're probably just drinking stuff. more is what you're doing. You put. Is some it in, considered in like a prebiotic or anything? It's, is it? No, it's got cat? some antimicrobial properties, uh, so it could kill you know certain bad bacteria, bacteria right? Yeah, and, and but, it's supposed to populate good bacteria, kill bad bacteria. That's all it really is, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's not. Again, there's no. There's is it no that much different food? than eating like fermented food? Is it that much? I mean, uh, you know, re- regular vinegar I think is kind of similar. So regular vinegar, balsamic vinegar, has got some health properties. If we're going to compare. The two. Right. But you know what it is, is what they'll do is they'll take, and they'll do this often with foods, is they'll they'll take one thing and then they'll they'll extrapolate and yeah, add yeah, yeah, like, yeah. oh, okay, so the antioxidant capability of this is this. And then they'll you know, then they'll say, oh. That's what they did with the acai berries. Yes. They took out that like, oh, these super antioxidants, and they go, Well, what are antioxidants good for? Antioxidants mm-hmm. are good for X, Y, and Z. Therefore, this juice helps cure X, Y, and Z. It's exactly. Like, like you, whoa. Yeah, you wanna know what this sh- you don't want to know what the shitty truth is? And this is backed by lots of studies. Here's the shitty truth. And I know it's a lot more complex than this. But if you're eating in a calorie deficit, a lot of what you eat doesn't really make that big of a difference. Now, I know that people are going to hammer me for this, and there's I, I, I totally admit it's a lot more complex than this, and what you eat determines how you feel, and there's essential nutrients and essential macronutrients. I get all that, so I'm not you know saying that that's not true. But like sugar is a good example. High sugar diet where your calories are below maintenance. You're at a, a weight loss diet that's high in sugar. Guess what that sugar does to your body? Nothing. It doesn't do to your body what a high sugar, high calorie diet does to your body, where yeah. you see all this inflammation and you know increased you know cancer risk and all that stuff. So this is true for a lot of things. That's like Lane's number one mission is to get that message across to people. Is that in in the context of low calorie, all this bullshit that people try and say about doesn't stuff make that big of a raises difference. insulin and this is the cause of obesity epidemic and Coke will make you fat and sugar will make you fat. He's like, dude, in a, if show me a study that shows you in a calorie deficit all those adverse effects that you're talking about. From it those doesn't. Foods. And the, and the, and the, there are scientists that will do this on themselves. I ate a. Fast food diet, and I lost 30 pounds and improved all my blood you know, markers or whatever. Now, here's why it's more complex. It's going to make your appetite. You're going to be hungrier. You're probably going to feel like shit. You're going to crave more food. Mm-hmm. It's not sustainable. So there's a lot more to what I'm well, saying. Well, yeah, and you can't tell me that. Okay, let's say you have uh, your calorie maintenance is 2,000 calories, right? So calorie deficit would be 1,500. Okay, right. so if you're eating 1,500 calories. Someone who eats 1,500 calories of a balanced diet, proteins, carbs, fats from whole foods, versus someone who eats 1,500 calories from mint chip ice cream, Hey, you can't tell me that the person that is eating the whole food diet is not going to have other health markers or other benefits that the person in the calorie deficit. Yeah, there's, of course. Where this, this- you you got to still have your essential nutrients and all that, of course. But I'm saying, let's say you have two lower, you know, two uh, diets that are below maintenance in calories. Okay, one of them is 150 grams of carbohydrates. The other one is 150 grams of sugar which is also carbohydrates, right? So both carbs are the same, one sugar, one isn't. If they stay that way, you're not going to see that much of a difference in terms of the person's health and stuff. Now, how they feel, I will argue, is different. You eat 150 grams of sugar, yeah. your appetite's probably going to be a little bit different, up and down, your energy might be a little different. And that's important. We should consider all that. But my, well, my point cr- is- Cravings that too, right? That's what I mean. Yeah. My point, though, is that there's this whole superfood thing now, there's definitely foods that don't have tons of value, except for maybe the palatability. Right, right. Like, I can argue that- like Watermelon you know, versus avocado. Yeah, or a Twinkie, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it doesn't have, it's got calories, but I mean, what other value? But these, this whole superfood argument, um, a lot of it is just, they'll take something that a lot of people don't use that seems exotic, mm-hmm. and then they'll spin it, 
and market it and sell it to you. And because you've never used it before, because it sounds weird, you know, it's the goji berry, it's noni juice, it's whatever. <laughs> Now you're gonna. Now that all being said, I don't see there's any there's any no harm no foul in you taking two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar in the morning if it makes you feel good and you notice it makes your gut feel good. It's a very inexpensive product, or you can just hydrate your ribs like I do with it. (laughs) So what do you soak them in it and then? Well, yeah, like when you do a long smoke like that, like every hour, couple hours, I'll go in there and I'll hydrate the meat so it doesn't Mm -hmm. dry out completely. And apple cider vinegar is really good for that. Just the apple and the the flavor mix really well with it. That's all. Aside from gaining 20 pounds of muscle, I don't, I didn't notice anything on it. (laughs) Anyway, uh, (laughs) just kidding. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free guides. We have guides that can help you build muscle, burn body fat, improve your health, get a better squat. We even have guides for personal trainers. You can find that again all at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Hey, look, if you like that whole episode, click right here for shorter clips where we talk about specific topics. You'll love it. And don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed our content and you want more.